I'm making this video because many of you told me that you are buying your first home or buying your first private home. But before we start, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, or share it with anyone who might find this topic relevant to them. First of all, ask yourself why you need to buy a new home. You may be getting married, having a new baby, or you just want to move out for some independence, or you want to move closer to your workplace or to the schools, or you're just downsizing for retirement. Whatever your reason, you must be clear about your objective because there are too many people out there who don't really know what they want. They may tell you that, hey, I'm buying this place for my own stay, but if prices go up, I will sell my home for a profit. But does that mean you want to sell your home at a good price in a good market and you're going to buy your next home at a much higher price? If you have stayed in your home, whether the prices of the home go up or down has nothing to do with you because you need a place to stay anyway. Another thing is, the criteria for a home may not be suitable for the needs of a tenant. So the area and type of housing that you choose as a home may not have the investment value that you think. The second thing is to know your priorities. What is important to you? You may be buying a home because you want to have a bigger place to accommodate the size of your expanding family. Then buy a home that's big enough for the whole family so you don't have to buy again next time. So you would have to go for a place that has three decent sized bedrooms. Just don't go for those that are 750 square feet and still need to squeeze inside three tiny bedrooms. Maybe location is most important to you because you want to move closer to your in-laws or closer to the children's schools. Then make sure that you buy a place that is in the place in the district that is convenient to you. Even if an agent come and tell you that, hey, I know a place that's very suitable to you, but it's just outside the area that you're looking at, then don't go for it. Know your priorities. One important thing is remember, Limit yourself to two to three criteria only because you have too many priorities, you have no priority at all. If you are a Singapore citizen and you are buying a flat for the first time, I would recommend you to buy a first-hand retail flat from the government if you are eligible to buy one. Because there's no other housing option that has so much grants and is highly subsidized by the government and the taxpayers' money. Look at all the other countries in the world, you may find some that provide equally good public housing. But, can you find one country that is easy to migrate to get your PR and get your citizenship to be eligible to buy a public flat and the quality is as good as those in Singapore? Chances are you may have to marry a local and the flat will be under your spouse's name. You may say that, hey Mina, you don't walk the talk you yourself didn't buy an HDB flat. In the first place, I was not eligible to buy HDB flat because I was not yet a citizen back then and I was way below the age of 35 at that time. So I have to look for other options. If you are planning to buy a private home, I would recommend you to buy secondhand projects rather than brand new projects for three simple reasons. The first thing is you have a lot more choices. They may tell you that there are 40 new projects to be launched this year. But look at those top 10 site projects last month. 9 out of 10 of them are actually not new projects because they've been launched for 2 years. And there's not much differentiation in those mass market condominium projects. They all have oversized balcony, tiny bedrooms, not much usable area. But you have a lot more choices if you go for resale projects. Go for those that are built during the good times when the developers' margins are a lot higher and they are more generous in, in the fittings and also the carpentry work. The second reason is you would have better value for money if you go for second-hand projects. If a new project is selling for 1800 per square foot in the area, you will find the resale projects nearby they are only going for 1,004 to 1,005 per square foot. Of course you go for them because how long are you going to wait for the value of properties in that area to go up from 1,004 to 1,008 per square foot? 
By then, your so-called new project would have become one of the old resale projects there. There are many reasons why owners have to sell their home. That's why if you buy a resale project, prices are more negotiable. If you buy a developer, they may give you 5% discount and you already can't wait to buy, not realizing that you're actually buying the same price as many others. Why I always buy properties at the lowest price? Because next time if I need to sell and cash out, I would have a lot more margin to pay with. I would be able to let go at a lower price because I have a comfortable and big enough profit compared with the other sellers. The last reason is what you see is what you get. Unlike buying offhand projects from the developers that is still under construction, if you buy second-hand units, what you see is what you get. So you can avoid surprises or disappointments uh, when you see the unit is so different from the show fact with poor quality, bad views and shrinking in size. And you don't have to fix all the developer defects. All the basic things like lighting, uh, fittings, or built-in cabinets have already been done. If you really need to buy a brand new unit, you can wait till the market is very quiet and there's no one else buying. Then go to developers that have projects that have some leftover units and buy from them at a very good discount. Or you can go for subsidized units bought by early buyers that they have to let go urgently. There's one question that people often ask, which is how do I know that I can afford my dream home? So I'm going to repeat my 55 rule here. The first thing is you must set aside minimum 30% of the asking price of your property so that you can pay for the down payment and the transaction costs. Second thing is, your monthly mortgage cannot go beyond one third of your monthly salary. The last thing, the asking price of your home cannot be more than five times of your annual income. If you have difficulty meeting any of the three criteria, it's either you cannot afford your dream home or property prices are too high. So you have two options. You either go for a more affordable housing type or you save more and wait till property prices come down. There's one interesting observation over the years. During the good times when property prices go up, people will criticize my Fifi 5 rule saying that it is impractical. If we use it, we all cannot buy properties and we'll all miss the opportunities to buy and profit from properties. But when times are bad, like after the introduction of new cooling measures or during COVID-19 in these days, I received many messages thanking me for sharing the Fifi 5 rule. They tell me that they wanted to buy last time and luckily they didn't buy. The truth is, the formula of my Fifi 5 rule have never been changed since day one. And I'm not that flexible to change my affordability rules according to the economic climate. And I believe that both in life and in investment, there are values that should be changed. For example, living well below your means. That's another question that people often ask. How many properties should I see before I buy? Most of people, they will just go and see 10 homes and pick one. For me, because I'm a property investor, I will follow the one in 100 rule. That means I go to see 100 of them and I buy one. My first pack of property, I bought after I viewed 75 of them and I made a mistake. The second one I bought after I go to see 138 of them and that is a much better buy. Many years ago, I used to go to Singapore Savings Bank to do the refinancing and repricing of my private properties. And I always go to this uh, executive in the mortgage department. And anyway, this old uncle has retired many years ago. And that's once that I had to go to his office to sign some documents. And after I returned the signed document to him, he suddenly said, how come every time you bought your properties at the lowest price? 
see this one where got houses selling at such prices and the previous one how could you buy it so cheap and this one how come I didn't know that you can buy at such low price I told him hey that is something that you don't know people buy at market prices because nobody will do their homework as hard as I would many people buy properties with support from rich parents wealthy husbands high paid jobs profits from business or get a COA after selling the HDB fest but I got nothing I could only work hard save hard for my humble job and all the money I put in my property investment they are all my hard earned money so every single dollar in my down payment had my sweat and drop in it so I died that I could not lose money I would only buy if I can buy at the lowest price so if you have this mentality as mine when you buy your first home you won't go wrong to buy your first private home there's no need to be smart or to be an expert to get it right you only need two things patience and hard work I hope you have a better idea about how to buy your first private home now send me a message if you have any question or you have anything to share with me Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video and I'll talk to you again in my next video.